Hi guys, it's Jess with Jess is Blessed and today's video is going to be a video showing you guys how I sew my cloth pads. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around and thank you so much for watching. First of all, I'd like to say I am definitely not a pro sewer. I am not a master sewer. I've only been sewing for about uh, close to five months. However, I have been sewing a lot and I have gained a lot of experience over the past five months and I think that I sew very well, especially for someone at my level. Second of all, for this video, I won't be going over like how to operate a sewing machine or you know the basics of sewing. If you're watching this video, it's designed for those of you that have a basic skill set involving a sewing machine already, that you already have the skills that it takes to sew a project. Next, for this tutorial, I'm using a pattern by Versadile, and she is an amazing cloth pad maker. I don't believe she's making cloth pads anymore, but she does sell her patterns on Etsy, and they are amazing. They're very easy to use, simple instructions. I think she has a background in graphic design, and so they're really professionally made. And just like I said, really easy to use. And the cool thing is they're all interchangeable. And this is not sponsored. I just really am a fan of hers. So I will leave a link to her shop down below. So that is if you'd like to buy one of her pad patterns. Now if you already have a pad pattern that you like to use, you can totally use that with this tutorial. I, you do not have to use a versatile pattern. I was just letting you guys know what I used. Also, I am not using a seam allowance with this tutorial. I learned that basically from Versatile, from her sewing tutorial videos. And it'll all make sense as we go along and as you see. But if using a seam allowance is something that you just have to do, then you can still draw in your seam allowance in the appropriate step. So you can totally use that. But basically for my tutorial, for what we're doing here, all you'll need is your pad pattern that's the exact size of your finished pad that you want to have. So if you want an eight inch pad, then you're going to have an eight inch pad pattern. And if you want a nine inch pad, nine inch pad pattern, etc. So this tutorial does not have seam allowances. Now if you don't have a pad pattern and you don't want to spend money on buying one or you don't have the money to buy one, then there's an amazing video showing you how to make a pad pattern at home super easy with a piece of paper and a ruler and a pen. And it's by a lady named Amy Nix. I will leave a link to her video down below as well that is how to make a, I believe it's a quarter fold pattern or a half fold pattern but uh, I'll leave a link to it down below it's an excellent way to make your own pad patterns in fact that is how I made my first pad patterns that turned out really well was from that video of Amy Nix's so I'll leave that down below if you need a pad pattern oh and along with the seam allowance thing the reason that I'm not using a seam allowance is because I have made a whole bunch of pads with the seam allowance and without and I have found that just doing it without the seam allowance is faster and it doesn't make any difference in the finished pad and it's just way 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 faster than having to trace that out and cut that out and it's just way faster and I prefer to do it without a seam allowance but again if that's really important to you and you want to do it that way, then by all means do it that way. And then last, I will leave a comprehensive list of all the materials and everything that I did show in separate parts in this video down in the comment section below if you want to just see it all in one place, as well as I will put an index in there. So if you would just prefer to jump around to certain parts or go back to a certain part, then you'll know at what point in the video that part is. So I hope that this is really helpful. Please forgive my chattiness and how lengthy it is. This is um, actually a lot harder of a video to do than I ever imagined, but I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that it is helpful and thank you guys so much for watching watching. I love you. Okay, so for this first step, what you're going to need is your topper fabric. Mine is 100% woven cotton. 
your backer fabric, and mine is WinPro Fleece. It's water resistant, not waterproof. Then you're going to need your core fabric. Mine is 380 GSM Hemp Fleece. Very absorbent, very soft. And your hidden core piece, which mine is cotton flannel. You can also use any very thin absorbent material like this is a cloth diaper flat or you can use anything that's cotton and thin as your hidden core piece. Then you're going to need an ironing board and an iron, a cutting mat or cutting surface, a rotary cutter. However, if you don't have a rotary cutter, you can just use scissors. Make sure they're fabric scissors. Then a fine-tipped washable marker. These Crayola ones work great. And finally, your pad pattern. You're going to need the sew on the line part of the pattern, the actual size of the pattern that you want, and your core piece. Now you're going to take your topper material and spread it out and find the grain line and make sure that you're going to be cutting your pattern out along the grain line. And I think that's what I'm demonstrating here is just finding the grain line there. Then you're going to take your pattern and just figure out where on your fabric you want your pattern to be. Now for patterns that I use a lot, I make these clear plastic templates so that I can lay them down on the fabric and see through them and I can tell exactly what my pad is going to look like, especially if it's a really unique pattern or anything that I want a specific portion. But for this pattern, it's abstract, so the placement of the pattern isn't very important. So now I'm showing where you're going to be cutting. Since we're not using a seam allowance, we're just going to kind of eyeball about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And this is where you don't have to be super perfectionistic. Just make sure you're leaving enough material so that you can turn and top stitch later. Now we're going to repeat that process with your backer fabric. And you do the exact same thing. Just kind of eyeball a quarter inch seam allowance or more if you feel more comfortable with 3 8 seam allowance or half an inch. I kind of give myself room for error, so I give myself plenty of room around my pattern. And now we're going to repeat that process with the hidden core piece. So again, just make sure you're always cutting along the grain line and leaving enough seam allowance to turn and top stitch this whole thing when we're done. But we'll get there, we'll get to that point. And of course you could use scissors for that part if you would prefer. I just like a rotary cutter because it is much faster. Now you're going to take your core piece and again make sure you're cutting along the grain line which is what I'm showing here and make sure you're just cutting along the grain line otherwise it'll cause warping and problems with your pad down the line. So then you're going to position your core piece on your core fabric and use your washable marker to outline the pad. If you're very good with the rotary cutter, you can also just cut the core piece out with the rotary cutter at this point. But I wanted to show this just for especially new beginners. Then you can use scissors to cut this out if you would prefer, or again use the rotary cutter, which I find is just much faster and just as accurate. You can kind of take your time, but it still is faster than scissors. And I should have cut closer to the edge to conserve material. I wasn't paying attention. That's what I'm going to show you guys in just a second here. As I was folding it up, I realized that, oops, I should not have wasted that core material. This is very expensive fabric, but oh well. So now we're going to move on to ironing. And this part is very important. You're going to want to iron these pieces on low because how you put your pad together and sew it together is how it's going to stay. Now you'll see I'm using small circular motions. I'm not pulling or tugging on the fabric. A lot of times they will stretch if you pull or tug on them as you're ironing them. And then once you sew your pad together and wash it and it returns back to its former shape, it will warp and cause really bad issues. So you don't want your material to stretch at all while you're ironing it. So this part is very essential, but you need to be very careful while you're doing it. 
So you can see I'm just taking my time and ironing slow in little circles, not applying a lot of pressure and just ironing each piece individually and laying them aside. Now we're going to be drawing our sewing line on our hidden core piece. And if this doesn't make sense to you yet, it will as we go along. So you're going to take your pad pattern, the actual size of the pad that you are going to end up with, the actual size of the pad you want, you're going to place it on your hidden core piece and make sure that you leave plenty of room on all sides so that we can turn and top stitch later. Then you're just going to center it on there and use your fine tipped washable marker and start tracing around all the sides. Now you're going to want to take your time with this and be very, very particular, be very careful because where you draw the line is where you're going to be sewing. So this line is going to determine how accurate and how nicely your pad turns out. If you rush through this step, then you'll end up with a messy pad in the end. Also, you want to use a fine tip marker because if you use a very thick marker, you'll have a hard time determining where on that line you're supposed to sew. So just make sure you use a very fine tip marker. Draw all the way around the pad. Try not to move your hand too much. Just try to keep it as still as possible. And you can use weights for this if you'd prefer to help keep the pad pattern in place. Now when you're done, it should look like this. And I like to leave to draw where I'm going to leave my turn hole on the pad just so that I don't forget, number one, and so I know where to start and stop and that I have plenty of room to turn the pad inside out later. I even write like turn hole or leave open right on there so that I don't forget because I've forgotten a few times. Then I also put an absorbency tag on there, so I also just write that on there right now so I don't forget when I'm doing the next steps. So that's what it'll look like when we get done here. And next we will be gluing the core piece to the hidden core. Now we'll go over the materials that we're going to need for the rest of the tutorial. You'll need sewing needles appropriate for your sewing machine and your fabrics. Now you don't have to have one of these, it's called a walking foot, but I highly recommend if you can that you get one. It helps when there's multiple layers of fabric like a pad that you're trying to sew. These little feet on the bottom help pull all those layers through your sewing machine. It helps basically walk and guide all those layers through so they don't shift on you. And so they're about $20 and highly, highly recommend they're worth the investment. Then this is a one quarter inch presser foot and this just really helps with top stitching. I find that it makes the best top stitches on my pads that I can possibly do because it's just very easy to guide and to follow. So I highly recommend using that. Then you want the thread that matches your pad. So whatever thread color and bobbin that's going to match your particular pad and so for this one I chose this really pretty green and I think it really contrasts well with the pad and just will make it really pop. Then I have these little thread snips. I like to keep them handy because it's just very nice to be able to trim threads while I'm sewing. Not essential but handy and same with this seam ripper. In case you make any mistakes you can just pull the seam out really fast and start over which I have to do quite often. And then I just have these small sewing scissors, and these are also very handy. They're very good for when we're turning and top stitching, uh, when we're cutting, trimming to do that. So then you're going to need a pair of full-size scissors, and these are also handy. Again, you don't need both kinds. I just like to show you what all I have and what I use when I'm sewing. And then these pinking shears, and these are excellent for trimming our pads before we turn them and then top stitch them. They help so that the fabric doesn't fray very much and they just really help eliminate the bulk of the material when you turn your pad. So these are, I would say, essential if you're making cloth pads. 
definitely also worth the investment. And then of course you're going to need your pad, the pieces that we have assembled so far. And then I have this absorbency ribbon I was telling you guys about. And I just place them in with the folded side in along, along the sewing line. I actually am showing it wrong on here. It, I do this, the folded side in. But anyways, and then I sew it right into the pad when I'm sewing that top line. And next, washable glue. And this stuff works amazing. I use it to secure the core piece to the hidden core piece so that it doesn't shift around while I am sewing. So it's excellent. Now it looks like I forgot to mention the sewing pins that are on the bottom right of my screen, but those are also essential and I don't know how I forgot to mention them, but definitely get some of those. Now we're going to glue the core piece to the hidden core. Now also, just like before, don't stretch the fabric. Just like when we were ironing, try not to stretch it. So use small, thin strokes to apply the glue because you don't want your core to stretch out. And with these like hemp materials, they stretch very easily. So just try to be as careful as you can and thorough and, and just apply a thin layer across the entire core. And then we're just going to move the core over to the hidden core piece. Make sure you're putting it in between, centering it very carefully between your sew lines. So if you have to move it and readjust it a couple times, just make sure that you're centering it on the pad. Because if it is off center, your pad is going to snap together wonky. So just very carefully center the core on the hidden core and kind of press it down a little bit. And this is what it should look like when you are done. And now we're going to take all of our pieces and move over to the sewing machine, finally! Now here you can start wherever you'd like. Just make sure that you do a couple stitches forward and then back stitch a couple stitches like I am doing here. And then stitch forward again just to lock your stitches into place and then just sew all the way around the core. I like to stay close to the edges so the edges don't curl up on me. And then when you've reached the end, then just make sure that again you do a couple back stitches and a couple stitches forward again just to really secure those stitches and lock them into place. Okay, now lift your presser foot and trim your threads. My machine has a little thread cutter right there on the side. And now take your thread snips or your scissors and trim any loose threads that you have. And then once you're done trimming your threads, this is how it should look. Okay, and now we're going to assemble the pad together and get ready to sew. So what you're going to want to do is take your topper piece. So you're going to want the pretty side of the fabric, the side that you want to see facing what you're going to have the back of the pad be. So you're going to have the pretty sides facing each other or the sides of the pad that will be on the outside. Those will be facing each other and then line them up and this sometimes takes a minute to get them lined up perfectly. And just smooth it out and make sure that it looks nice and you have plenty of room. Then take your hidden core piece with the core on it and your sewing line and also line that up. And make sure that you're lining it up so that you have plenty of room on each side. I like to lift up each of the edges of the pad just to kind of eyeball it and make sure that I have plenty of room so that when I sew I'm not going to sew off of it and not catch all three layers. So make sure that you're catching all of the layers of the fabric. Now if you're going to use an absorbency ribbon this is where I do that and I just glue the end together like this and kind of press it together with my fingers. Then I press it into the sewing line with the folded side on the inside. And then I use a little bit of glue just to secure it in place, washable glue. And again, the folded side is on the inside. 
and then I go around and pin. Now if you'd rather use clips, you can use clips. Just make sure that you're pinning all the essential areas and make sure that whatever way you're pinning, you just stick with whichever way you're doing it. If you're doing them horizontally, do them horizontally. If you're doing them vertically, do them all vertically. And then let's get to sewing. So I always start at the end of my turn hole. So wherever your turning hole is, I start on one side of that so that you don't have to start and stop numerous times. And then just sew right along the sewing line, removing the pins as you go. You don't wanna sew over a pin. That's a good way to break a needle or get hurt. But just take your time. When I get to a corner, I lift my presser foot and shift all of the layers of the fabric so that I'm not pulling or tugging. It's already hard enough not to have the layers shift. And so it's best with a pad to just lift the presser foot and rotate the whole project with the needle in the down position if you need to rotate your pad or when you need to rotate the pad. And this is sped up tremendously, but I do take my time. It takes me probably 10 minutes or 15 minutes to sew this just because I take my time. And as you can see, I'm getting back to the turn hole here now. and make sure that you are also back stitching and forward stitching at the beginning and end of the sewing. I forgot to mention that at the beginning part. But make sure that you are back stitching to lock those stitches into place. It's especially important where the turn hole is because when you're turning this pad inside out, it puts a lot of stress on those stitches right on that turn hole opening. Okay, and now here you can see I am just finishing my stitches. I'm just approaching the turn hole. And now I'm going to back stitch right here. And this is just, like I said, to really secure the stitches into place. Sometimes I even do this twice to make it just very, very strong because like I said, there's a lot of stress placed on that turning hole. Then lift your presser foot and you pull out the whole pad and again you're going to trim all of the loose threads and after trimming them this is what it should look like. And now before we start trimming anything, just make sure that you have sewn it together correctly and that the pretty sides are facing each other when you peek in there. And then you're going to take your pinking shears and just start trimming around the edge. Now be very careful that you don't trim into your stitches. You don't want to cut into the stitches. Be careful when you're, you're turning hole and leave extra material to tuck in so leave extra fabric there but the rest of the pad just trim very close to your sew line but without actually cutting into any of the stitches just be very careful of that and again leave extra room at your turn hole now you're going to go to the turn hole and you're just going to trim along these little lines or just where the stitches stop so you're just going to be trimming straight lines don't go all the way up to the pad, just go close and make sure that you're just leaving enough material that you can tuck it inside and when we turn and top stitch it will catch that extra layer of material or extra, I guess, flap of material. So you'll see I'm trimming off some here but I'm still leaving extra. Now you're going to go to the corners and I'm zooming in here so you can see, but you're going to want to trim each of the corners at an angle so that when you turn your pad inside out, the corners will be nice and crisp. So you want to trim those as close as you can, but don't, again, don't pop any stitches. Don't cut into your stitches. So trim any necessary corners that you have, any corners that stick out and then for corners that go in these concave corners you're going to trim a little slit into there and just close to the sew line again 
but don't pop any stitches and just leave a little tiny slit there. And that also just helps the pad when you turn and top stitch it, it just really helps it lay flat and not get bunchy or weird where the wings are or where any inside corners are. So this is very important. Don't forget to do this step because you'll have to turn your pad back inside out and do this step, which I've had to do before. So it looks like I'm just double checking all the corners here. And then this is what it should look like once we're done with these steps. This is what your pad should resemble. Granted, it'll be a different shape. Now to turn the pad inside out, I've found that crumpling it up, kind of crunching it, helps it when you are turning it. And then find your turn hole and make sure that you're turning it so that you can see the top, the pretty part of your pad and the back. So that is what you are aiming for when you're pushing through. And then just kind of tug it through, gently pull it, and just pull until you get all of it worked out. And sometimes this can take a while. So just be patient, try not to pull or tug too hard because it will pop the stitches on your turn hole. And so just take your time, you can use your fingers and just gently kind of push in and take your time just turning your pad inside out and you'll see here that I kind of sometimes roll the edges with my fingers and kind of do this little twisty motion with both of my fingers that kind of helps wiggle the corners out you just gently kind of wiggle each side and that really helps get the corners out as you can see and then you can use a dull pointed object. A lot of people use knitting needles. I don't have one, but here I'm using a pin that is not clicked out, so it isn't super, super sharp, but you can use that to gently push the corners out and kind of along the inside seam of the pad, and that works really, really well to turn your pad. Just, again, be very, very careful because if you poke through it, your pad is basically going to be ruined. It's really hard to repair at this point. So again, just gently go all the way around, taking your time, turning your pad, and really getting all of the corners out because you want your pad as flat as possible when you sew it because how you sew your pad when you top stitch it is how it's going to look forever. And so just really make it look nice. Now here we are basically with everything except for that turning hole fabric tucked in. And that's where that extra little flap is I was telling you guys about. And why that's essential to leave a little bit longer. Because here now you can see I tucked it in. And when we top stitch it's going to catch that. So now take it over to your ironing board and give it a good iron and just get it as flat as possible because like I said how your pad looks now is how it's going to look forever so I like to get mine as flat as possible looks just beautiful and now we're back at the sewing machine and we're going to sew a couple stitches forward back stitch and then just sew along the edge of the pad. Now, this is where I use the one quarter inch presser foot and I line up the right hand side with the edge of the pad. And that is where I keep my eye trained, is just on that very edge and I just sew all the way around the pad. And again, I take my time, I lift the presser foot and rotate the whole pad when I get to a sharp corner or a curve. I don't try to pull or tug on the whole pad and I really take my time with this part because the top stitching is going to be visible to the world. So this is where you show off your excellent showing, sewing skills. And the corners of the wings tend to be a little bit difficult and sometimes I have to kind of press down on the fabric or even on the presser foot to get it to lay flat. And then just sew all the way around your project. And sometimes you have to turn it back and sew another stitch or even shorten your stitch length if you need just a little bit less 
of a stitch when you get to the edge so that your stitches will line up when you turn the corner, if that makes sense. And then when you get to the end, again, just remember to back stitch and then lift your presser foot, trim your threads, and snip off all of your loose threads. And now this is what your pad should look like. Absolutely beautiful. It looks so gorgeous. I absolutely love the way that this pad turned out. I'm really, really happy with it. Okay, and now we're going to attach the snaps. I have this awl and then this snap attacher. I don't know what the actual official name is of it and they came in a set together. And then you can purchase a million different colors of snaps. These are cam snaps. Uh, then you're just going to find whichever color you feel like contrasts best with your pad. These are the cap pieces. These little round ones, this is the outside of the snaps. They're called caps. Then you're going to fold your pad over and just find which way you want your snaps to be, where you want your snap to be. And folding the wings over differently does sometimes affect the way the pad lays. So I suggest folding it both ways before you decide. Then you're just going to press the all through and I use my finger behind it just to make sure it doesn't puncture the pad. And press through both of the layers once you're sure on your snap placement. Then you're going to place your cap in on one side of the pad, facing the pretty side of the pad. You're just going to press it in and make it pop through that little hole. And then you're going to use the little pieces called the socket and the stud. And you can use whichever one you want. This is the stud, I believe. You're going to use your tool and press down really hard and it attaches the snap onto there. Now for the other side, you want to make sure, fold it over and make sure that you're going to have it snap on correctly. So with this other one, you place the cap on the opposite side of the pad. So from the back to the front and pop it through. Sometimes it is a little bit hard and now you're going to use the socket piece and then just before you attach it just double check and make sure that you are doing it so that you can snap your pad together once it is secured on because these are really hard to get off. Again you want one to face the front and one to face the back. It doesn't matter which side is which, which side of the pad you have the socket and which side you have the stud just make sure that one is facing the front and one is facing the back then press it on and there you have it that is what your finished pad should look like with the snaps on there some people do use ribbon or velcro you can use those if you'd like but i like the way the snaps look and this is what it looks like snap together and it's just beautiful so I hope that this was helpful I hope that you love it and thank you for sewing along with me okay guys so that was the sewing tutorial if you made it this far congratulations I know it was a long video but I hope that it was really helpful and I hope that you guys learned a lot took a lot away from it I have spent a lot of time researching and learning and perfecting how to make mama cloth pads and I feel like I am doing a really good job and I feel confident enough in my skills to pass this video along however if you're an expert sewer out there and you see that I'm doing something drastically wrong in this video then I'm totally welcoming of nice constructive criticism so definitely let me know but other than that if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything please let me know down below I will check the comments and I will be answering all comments the first 30 minutes after this video is uploaded if you're new to my channel please subscribe there's always lots of cloth diapering and mama cloth cloth menstrual pad videos, reviews, vlogs, and more, and lots and lots of giveaways. So stick around, we'd love to have you. Please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys very soon. So until next time, good night, goodbye, and stay blessed.